gangsters and family heartbreak. Yeah, it all started with a perfect robbery, as Ruth Goodman explains. Spring 1952, and a mail van is making its regular run through the dark streets of London. It's laden with sacks full of money to be delivered to banks across the city. But the van's journey is being monitored by a gang of watchers along its route. It's all part of preparations for a robbery, organised with precision by a determined and meticulous team of criminals. It was staged on this street in the centre of London and at the time was the biggest cash robbery in British criminal history. Douglas Thompson is an expert on the London crime scene in the post-war period. So was this a well-planned crime? Probably one of the most perfectly planned crimes of the 20th century. They mapped out the route that the post office van took. They timed it time and time and time again. I mean, they had it to every second. Around 4 a.m. on the 21st of May, 1952, and as the postal workers loaded their van and then drove through London, they didn't know an inside man had deactivated their alarm. They were sitting ducks for the robbers, waiting in two cars on East Castle Street. And the post office van is coming down here, and suddenly the two other cars come out. One comes out the back here, one comes this way, and they block it off. They bundle out the three post office workers. Their men go in the van and take off, and that's it. Just took a couple of minutes, and it was over. It's almost a magic trick. One minute they're there, the next minute they're not here. The subsequent police investigation was huge. Helen Dafter is an archivist at the Postal Museum in London. How much money was taken? 250,000, but that would equate to almost six million in today's money. So how did the investigation proceed? They thought it may have been an inside job. It is considered doubtful whether an operation so well planned could or would have been executed without up-to-date knowledge of the internal arrangements. Post office workers were cleared. In fact, none of the robbers were caught, even though the post office files show investigators were certain a gang leader called Billy Hill was responsible. There simply wasn't enough evidence to charge him. Billy Hill, I think everyone would agree, was the brains behind the whole operation. He ran London's underworld throughout the 50s. He was Mr Big, so he planned robberies, and people knew when he did plan them that they worked. But Billy Hill didn't carry them out. His gang did that. One of the robbers was Terence Hogan, also known as Lucky Tell. His daughter Karen has written about her father's life of crime. So how was your father involved in the East Castle Street robbery? The planning mainly because he had a precise OCD way of thinking, you know, everything was exact. They would drive up and down East Castle Street repeatedly. They sometimes were stopped by police, but my father in his Savile Row suit, dark glasses and fast cars said he was a film producer, producing a gangster film. This was one of the crimes that fueled a wealthy lifestyle. We had huge houses. We had amazing holidays. There'd be plates of money lying on tables like cookies. As a young girl, Karen had no idea her father was a criminal until he made the decision to turn his back on crime. He was in prison for the first three years I was born. My mother would take me to visit him. She said it was a TB hospital. <laughs> Later on, after going to Alcoholics Anonymous, and he suddenly started to tell me who he was. I couldn't believe it. My father wasn't who he said he was, and this is all lies. But I realised what he'd done was a big thing. He'd come clean, and he was starting his life afresh. What happened to the money? Gambling, drinking. We all ask ourselves what happened to the money. Perhaps it wasn't meant to ever do anyone any good. Terry Hogan's attempts to go straight ended in business failure, depression and ultimately suicide. Any elation he felt after the East Castle Street robbery was long forgotten. I saw the demons that haunted him and that was all because of criminality. I can't glamorise my father or condone what he did. I can only say that the love between he and our family was phenomenal. He was what he was, but I don't recommend it to anyone else that they get involved in crime because crime does catch up with you and you pay in the end. Oh.